Hey, my name's Dan, and this video is an introduction to components in Framer. We're going to talk about how to set up variants for different component states and how to pass information down to your components with variables. So let's just jump right in. If you're new to the idea of components, they're just a way of encapsulating some piece of UI and reusing it, often with different properties. Let's take this blog post card. We know we're going to need to reuse this with different blog posts, so let's go ahead and make a component out of it. We select the outer frame and right click, click create component. Let's call that blog post. It'll take us to our new master component. And we can see that it appears under the assets tab. Anytime we want to use this component, we can just drag it in from the assets tab. Anytime we want to make a change, we can just double click on it and go to the master component. So say I want to make this gap super big. We can see that it rolls out to all the instances of that component. We can also nest components inside of other components. We know we need multiple authors. Let's go ahead and make a component. Call it author, click create. And we're going to go ahead and do the same for this tag up here. And now when we go back, we can see that these are instances of those components. But we also know that we're going to need to have multiple authors. So how do we do that? The key here is something called a variant. A variant is just a copy of our component with some different properties. It's basically just a different state of the same components. So let's create a variant. We do that by going into our component and clicking this variant button. Now let's add a, another author and a different title. And we're going to pull in another image from Unsplash. So go to Unsplash, and just type in profile. Now if we go back to the blog post component and we select that author, we can see that there's a new field here called variant that lets us switch between Michael and Lindsay. Let's add some more authors and let's do the same for our tag component. Okay, now that that's all set up, we can switch between variants of both of these components. But I also want to make sure that when someone hovers over one of these blog posts, that it looks clickable. So for that, we're going to add a hover variant. Framer has this shortcut set up for us. We just click on this hover slash press button down here, select hover, and we have this new variant. But you'll notice that this little purple line connects the two. And that's because Framer has set up an interaction so that when someone hovers over this component, it automatically transitions to this component. So let's change the background color so it darkens a little bit on hover. Now if we go back and preview this, we can see that it changes when we hover over it. One quirk about variants in Framer is this concept of a primary variant. Basically, this means that if we make any change to our primary variant, those changes also happen in our hover variant or any other variant. So if I change the gap here, we can see that it updates in the hover variant below it. This is handy because we don't have to update all of our variants every time we want to make a change. If we don't want our hover variant to change, we can just override it like so. We can also reset that override by right clicking and selecting reset overrides. Another important thing to understand about variants in Framer is that if you add a new element in a variant, it gets added to all the other variants, but just hidden. So if I create another variant here that has three tag components, we can see that those tags are still in this primary variant, but they're just invisible. Now, I won't go into too much detail about why it works like this, but just be careful not to delete these because it will delete them everywhere. Okay, so now that we have a handle on variants, we need to talk about how to pass different values into our component. Each time we use this blog post component, we are going to want to have different content. The way we do that in Framer is by setting up something called variables. Let's start with a simple one. I just want to change the blog post title. So if we go into our blog post component and select the title text next to our content field, there's a little plus button. So if we press that, create variable, and for now we're going to go with plain text. You'll see that it's given it a name and a default value. I like to select text area here so that we can see more of our value. To save this, just click away. Now if we go back to our main page, we have this title field, and we can change the title to anything we want. 
Now, we kind of need to add variables for almost everything in this blog post card, but let's just quickly look at how we can change the author and the image. Select our author component, and we can see that that same plus is next to this variant field. We can make a variant variable. Let's call this author, and let's do the same for our image. So if we click on that, next to the fill, we have a create variable button. We want the image type, and call this cover, click away. And now if we go back to our main page, we can change the author on our post, and we can change the cover image. So let's pull in another one from Unsplash. So that's pretty cool. We'll go through variables in more detail in another video, but that's pretty much it for the basics of components in Framer. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, I have a bunch more beginner Framer videos. I'm also working on an advanced Framer course, which you can find by going to the link in the video description. Anyway, catch you next time.